Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Hearst Ranch is a proud sponsor of the Heritage Radio Network. Learn more about Hearst Ranch at HearstRanch.com. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. We're a member-supported food radio network broadcasting over 35 weekly shows live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. Join our hosts as they lead you through the world of craft brewing, behind the scenes of the restaurant industry, inside the battle over school food, and beyond. Find us at heritageradionetwork.org. Hey, hey, you're listening to Eat Your Words on Heritage Radio Network. I'm your host, Kathy Irway, and we're back for 2018. It's our first show for the new year. And what a year it's been. Oh, my gosh, what a week. I I don't even know what kind of adjective to use for that. It has been some kind of week. Um, Now the government is currently shut down. Uh, I got to march in New York again for the Women's March yesterday and uh, celebrating or celebrating or marking the anniversary of our president in office. And in the food world, it has been especially tumultuous given um, allegations of sexual abuse that have been rife in the industry of restaurants and hospitality. So much, much to talk about. Um, on those issues, but uh, I have a guest today who has had an especially tumultuous week, I think. Um, She is a a brilliant blogger and author of a memoir, and she wrote a post that went viral. It is, uh, it was taking down Mario Batali's pizza, pizza dough cinnamon rolls um, that he decided to include in an apology letter about his sexual misconduct. So she is the blogger of the Everywhereist, and it is Geraldine De Reuter. How are you, Geraldine? Hi, hi. Uh, I'm doing well. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm, I guess it's afternoon for you. It, just barely afternoon, but yes. Um, uh, it's good. It's good. You know, the Women's March was very actually uh, interesting and, and uh, empowering. So it's been exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was. Um, I was sick this year. I oh, went last year. Yeah. I think we were in. New York for it last year, um, and this year I was sick, and I, uh, I I was staying at home, but I was watching, I was looking at the photos, and uh, uh-huh. and it's always it's always in, it's, it's equal parts inspiring, uh-huh. and also there's something about it that kind of gets you like, okay, we are it's 2018, <laughs> and we are we are marching for women's rights um, yeah. in 2018. So yeah, it's, it's always it's this double-edged kind of sword of empowerment and also a little demoralizing. Right. It's true. Um, and you're in Seattle, by the way, right? I am. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, you call yourself a feminist uh, and your Twitter avatar and your recent post really, really takes into account and thoughtfully sort of intercepts a lot of issues around sexual harassment in the I made the pizza cinnamon rolls from Mario Batali's sexual misconduct apology letter. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of feminism, what does that mean to you in today's day and age? 
I mean, I, I think I go with a pretty textbook definition of mm-hmm. a feminist. And so that means, you know, I believe in the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. I believe that women historically have dealt with a lot of oppression and subjugation based on their sex. And from kind of from a more personal standpoint, it means that, um, you know, I've got to fight the patriarchy in all the ways I can uh, Mm -hmm. and fight for everyone who is hurt by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great sort of, Time, what do you get? Timeless definition, but it has so many different meanings in different times. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, you also are the author of a memoir that came out um, last summer. It's called mm-hmm. All Over the Place. And it, um, well, tell me a little bit about how you got started writing your blog, The Everywhereist, and also your travel memoir. Well, so I um, I was originally uh, a game creator, a playing game creator at a Seattle company, mm-hmm. and I loved my job. It was kind of, I was one of those very unusual people who adored their work. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I went on vacation, and while I was on vacation, I got uh, an email from a coworker that said, hey, we've all been laid off. Oh, I said, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I kind of knew yeah. it was coming. We all, we all had kind of foreseen it. Um, and I got back to Seattle and I, you know, I, I started doing some, some work and some freelancing. Uh, but my husband had been traveling quite a bit for his work and he said, well, why don't you, why don't you come with me for a little bit? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll, you know, you can work from the road. And I said, all right, well, I'll, I'll give this a try. Right. Uh, and, and so at his suggestion, he said, you know, why don't you, why don't you create like a blog just to get, since you're a writer, you'll, you'll kind of create this online portfolio and you'll get your work out there. And I thought, okay, you know, that, that makes sense. So, um, so we had a long discussion about what my blog should be about. Um, because he's, he's just a great collaborator. He's a great person to, to bounce ideas off of. And he said, you know, I think you should make it a travel blog. And I thought, yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll start a travel blog. And, and a, a, like a month into it, it hit me that I don't know how to travel. <laughs> um, so I'm writing this travel blog, and I am the person on the planet least qualified to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just pretending that I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to sound like an authority, and I'm just a complete fraud. And at <laughs> some point, I can't do it anymore. So I just start writing the truth, which is I don't know what I'm doing and I'm getting lost and I'm getting ripped off and, and I'm getting motion sick everywhere I go (laughs) because I suffer from that. So I just, I just open the floodgates of all the disasters that are happening to me. And that is when the tenor of the blog changed. And when people started responding to it in a very different way, they were like, Oh, well, Hey, you're, this is sort of, this is something I can relate to Mm -hmm. now. Um, so it is, that is the tone of the book as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the memoir came out in fall. It's called all over, or excuse me, in, in the spring. And it's called all over the place, Mm -hmm. adventures in travel, true love and petty theft. And it is essentially about all the mishaps and all the things that go wrong, um, written by a travel blogger who probably shouldn't have been one. I love that, you know, you said you're really bad at traveling, but yeah. yet that is the most captivating thing connected with readers. So maybe. Yeah, no, I think, well, so I think what people latch on to is, um, is sincerity. I think mm-hmm. if you're going to write, like, I, I, you know, there's this pressure to, oh, I need to be an expert in my field. No, you just need to be, I think you just need to be real and yeah. honest. And I think people respond to that. And funny, too. I mean, this is a, this is a blog that is very hilarious. And oh, thanks. <laughs> it, it, um, yeah, it, it's, it's friendly. And, and, and it has that approachability that, you know, reading a travel writer who's like, oh, and this, you know, know-it-all type of personality, it's, it's very refreshing. Um, so I, I also like that you kind of compared in the about section um, of your website when you're the about the book section um you said that it's not your average travel memoir you know the eat pray love trope of the love love, i don't know what does it get broken hearted you know lost person who finds a strapping young italian somewhere (laughs) (laughs) because you were already married happily and so yeah 
that kind well, of story. And, and I think that, um, you know, I think that there's something, I don't know, I think that we we sometimes, you know, obviously we, we romanticize travel, but we do so almost at the expense of the life that we have. Mm. And I think that, I don't think that travel should make us want to abandon everything that, that we have and right. love and hold dear. I think it should make us look at the life that we have and say, and with a new fr- pair of eyes and say, oh no, look at all the things that are great about the life that I mm-hmm. have. Um, so that's that's kind of what, I mean, that's what it did for me, as, as cheesy as it sounds. Um, right. And so, no, I wasn't, you know, I'm obviously not looking for for romance on 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 the road because I've got my husband with me so I you know I had romance I brought it with me I checked it in and 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 so yeah and yet you <laughs> share along the way so many sincere um, revelations about relationships um, along the way and it, it's 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 really refreshing I think to see that you know you you can start um, a new path you can find yourself you can have this deeper self reflection not through like a crisis of some sort but just by keeping your eyes open and looking. I think so. Yeah, I don't think we need to... I think in order to have a, an epiphany, you don't always need to burn everything to the ground. I think sometimes you just need to be aware and open your eyes and, you know, turn turn things and look at them from a new angle. Yeah. Now, let's. that's a great um, segue into... Let's talk about the Mario Batali recipe. Um, right. Looking at that. Um, so it... For those who haven't, you know, heard about it, um, Mario Batali was accused of many counts of sexual harassment and was effectively kicked off of his television shows and um, his restaurant business. But um, he wrote this apology letter in his newsletter that was pretty sobering. It was, it was, you know, serious in tone. But at the end of it, it was like, oh, and by the way, here's a great recipe for pizza dough cinnamon rolls. Why was that so? Why did you? Why has that struck you, Geraldine, and so many other people as um, wrong or strange? I mean, I think I think it was a couple reasons. I think one is that the tenor I, it just was completely off tone. Like mm-hmm. um, it was like you know, we're, let's move on. It's you know, there's there's this there's this letter which. I, if I want to pick it apart, I mean, at this point, I'm just so relieved when when we are getting apologies for sexual misconduct that yeah. I'm not I'm not one to pick apart the apology letters. Um, so I could, and there, you know, this one is not perfect by any means. Uh-huh. Um, so the letter itself, you know, is out there, but then at the end, as this postscript, there's this pizza dough cinnamon roll <laughs> recipe, and I think that I think it. I think it bothered people for a lot of reasons. I think for one, it it, it felt like a, a willful distraction. Like, look here, look what I'm throwing at you. And it it almost was like, well, do, do you expect us to make this? Like, in light of these allegations, like, do you actually, or, or just in general, do you, do you expect us to do this right now? Mm-hmm. And so it just was so absurd. And, for me, too, there was also this note of, you know, he is a man who is famous for being a chef, and it felt self-promotional in a really strange way, uh, the same way it would be about anything. Like, if a, if a, you know, if a director accused of sexual harassment was like, oh, by the way, check out the trailer for my new film mm-hmm. at the end of an apology, um, it just would be, it's just strange, and it's, it's really not giving it's not giving the situation your full attention mm-hmm. and i don't think that uh you know including a recipe means that your attention is automatically somewhere else and i think that was wrong yeah it's kind of like let's brush this under the table and mm-hmm. business as usual but um yeah and and then the funniest thing is that you did make this recipe you followed it word for word and uh what did you think of the recipe Itself. Oh, I thought it was awful. Yeah. I mean, it was terrible. Um, and and I think that uh, so that's like, part of the reason it was funny is you know so I, I it was it was just nagging at me and I kept thinking uh, you know for, for a while I was like oh you know what that was ridiculous um, but then I just kept thinking about it 
And I thought, no, I think I'm going to make this ridiculous <laughs> recipe because pizza, you know, the idea of pizza dough and cinnamon rolls, like, didn't make sense to me in the first place. Um, and I've made his pizza dough recipe before, which is incredibly savory. It includes about a, a tablespoon of salt mm. and white wine. No. Uh, so when I when I realized that, I I thought, oh, did he what if do that? What if this recipe he gave us is actually terrible? Uh, and I thought that the absurdity of that mm-hmm. would would merit some attention. So mm-hmm. I figured I would try it and see. And it it was awful, which just sort of adds another layer of craziness to all of this. Right. That you've included a cinnamon roll recipe in your sexual harassment apology letter, and it's not even a good one. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, <laughs> nobody else bothered to make it. So thank you for point, for like discovering that and kind of... <laughs> pointing this out even more. Um, But we're going to talk a little bit more about that right after a quick little commercial break. I don't go in for understanding when you are away. Can't use my heart to think away the time. In my room I will await you and so soon I will relate you. Tie your finger right on up to mine. Sweet Josephine, you live in my dreams. Hearst Ranch is a proud sponsor of the Heritage Radio Network. The Hearst family has been raising cattle on the rich, sustainable native grasslands of California's Central Coast for over 150 years. Piedra Blanca Rancho in San Simeon is the original Hearst Ranch, founded by George Hearst in 1865. George's son was the famous publisher, William Randolph Hearst. In addition to being known for building the iconic Hearst Castle, William was, like his father before him, an avid rancher. In his words, I would rather spend a month at the ranch than any place in the world. Thanks to one of the largest land conservation easements in California history, a joint effort with the California Rangeland Trust, the American Land Conservancy, and the state of California, the working landscape at Hearst Ranch will be preserved forever. Learn more about Hearst Ranch at HearstRanch.com. I'm not one for consolation, never second best. I'll practice till I get you right, my dear. So know that I will love you and my heart sings high above you. Takes away the doubt I have on fear. All right, we're back chatting with Geraldine De Reuter. So we were just talking about how you demonstrated that not only... Uh, you know, was Mario Batali's apology letter somewhat insincere after including the pizza dough recipe, but the recipe itself was just not good. It didn't quite work. Um, It got a lot of response, your post. It went viral, as they say. And and you've had posts, you mentioned you've had posts that have gone viral before, but this one seemed to take it to another level. There was attacks on all sides and you got hacked by trolls. I did well, yeah. Or so, um, so I have, you know, I wrote a post uh, a couple years ago about trying paleo for a week, and mm-hmm. and that went that did quite well. And I've had posts, do, you know, get picked up, um, but nothing like this. I mean, this was to the point where, you know, I've had major news publications contact me. The New York Times wrote about the piece. Right. Uh, the Washington Post included it in their newsletter. Um, so Martha on, Stewart retweeted the article. But in, so in a good way. Been, so on the, like, there's, like, both dramatic, you know, yeses or, like, pros and um, people who are really excited and supportive of this post. Yeah, yeah. No, the good attention. The, um, and the support's been just crazy and overwhelming and, like, really, really humbling. And uh, and then, you know, there's people who are leaving... Um, anti-Semitic slurs as comments in, in my, uh, right. you know, in, in, on my blog and, uh, and a couple people, you know, sending me hate mail via Twitter. And then, uh, the Sunday after the post went up, my Twitter account was hacked. Um, so I lost access to my Twitter account for about 36 hours. Um, and, I had to, I, I called in reinforcements, um, mm-hmm. and I have some wonderful, well-connected friends who all stepped wow. in and contacted their contacts at Twitter, and they were great about it, and so we got my account back, um, 
and the hacker threatens to do it again. And I can't, I, you know, for part of me was like thinking, well, maybe it was just someone who was opportunistic and they saw an account that was getting a lot of traffic and getting a lot of attention. um, And they saw, you know, they saw an opportunity to uh, get in and exploit, you know, uh, some security error and they, um, and they took over the account. But I was, then they said that they were going to do it again. And I'm like, well, that feels like a targeted threat. Yeah. Um, but I, I was looking in their DMs, uh, which is Twitter's kind of uh, private messaging system for people who are unfamiliar with it. And there were a bunch of messages where they were like, hey, teach me how to, to their friends saying, teach me how to change the handle. How do I wipe the account? How do I sell this account? So I don't, I don't quite know if it was uh, a targeted account, a targeted attack or not. But mm-hmm. I've had uh, numerous, well, a couple hacking attempts on the blog too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 been you know whenever you it, get attention for a piece, the downside uh, that attention right. is going to 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 be across the spectrum of good and bad. Right, but the uh, the comments are really disturbing, and when you know we see ugliness so much, um, you know when. Uh, you know, from from random people, you know, in the comments, peanut gallery, and so forth. But the ugliness against this particular post, and against, I guess, the 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 issues that you raised around sexual harassment, um, are are really. Uh, it just seems like a, a complete, you know, one eighty from all the celebration and uh, or applause that you received from this post. It's it's quite remarkable. I- <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I gosh, I hope the internet hasn't made me jaded because mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess, but like, I've, you know, I've gotten weird death threats over, like, over Seminoles. my blog before, and I run a travel blog. Right. So I think that there are, what I think there is, is I think there are people who are very much, when their actions are online, they're very much divorced from the true impact and consequence of their words. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we're seeing people saying things that are just profoundly horrible. Um, and mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's jarring and shocking. But it does represent, you know, a certain viewpoint that is very much anti-women's rights, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know... No. No, you're absolutely right. I do think I do think that there are people here out there who who genuinely believe this. I think that they are absolutely terrified by by this movement that's that's um, that's coming up. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, a friend of mine put it brilliantly. She was like, "Look, if you're afraid of the Me Too movement, well, you should be because right. that." that means that you've done something right. like if this, if women speaking up against harassment makes you scared, then that should make you, gets you riled up. question yeah. your behaviors mm-hmm. and look back and wonder, you should be wondering why that makes you scared. Right. So I think that that's, I mean, I think that that's a, a really good point to make. Mm-hmm. Do you feel more or less uh, excited to, to write more pieces that might be provocative for better, for worse? Do, I mean, you had a lot of, you know, hassle you dealt with having been hacked yeah, and then I constantly don't feel getting less excited. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was talking, I, I have a friend uh, and she, she always says whenever you're doing something, <laughs> she goes, as long, if you're doing anything, like mm-hmm. anything at all, that is at all of consequence, mm-hmm. somebody's going to get upset. Yeah. Um, even the smallest thing. And so... Uh, so I think that I, I think I'm still really excited to write. I don't know. Maybe there's there's a naivety there, but I I really enjoy writing and the voices of people who have been positive and amazing and supportive about this piece have been so great and have been louder than the negative right. ones. Um, right. So I'm still excited. That's awesome. I'm glad that you feel. That it's been positive overall, hopefully. Yeah. You'll have to ask Um, me again in like 15 minutes because it switches. (laughs) It goes on and off. Right. When when your blog shuts down. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. Two days ago, I was not, I was like, no, I'm done. What is this? So, you know. 
Oh, when you get the nastiest of anti-Semitic attacks or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fun. I mean, a couple actually, of them are hilarious because they're just so grammatically problematic oh. that you're like, wow, <laughs> like you, you really needed to work on this. And I almost want to send them like a spell checked version of their own hate mail. Like, hey, guys, like, I just cleaned this up for you. you. Like, this is actually how you spell that word. Oh, and FYI, I'm actually not Jewish. My husband is, but I understand what you're trying to go for here. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm just like. You uh, can do you that. Just, you you it's, can. It's ridiculous. Like, you, you almost, I almost feel sorry for these people. Yeah. I almost do. You can do whatever you want. You have like a front row seat to crazy. And I think that with your creativity and cleverness, you can maybe run with that. Um, Actually, did you ever hear anything or have you ever heard anything from anyone in Mario Batali's camp in the aftermath of this post? Um, I I don't know if that, what does he have a team still? Like, I, well, I don't know what's some, going on there, but I will say I have received um, really positive emails mm-hmm. from people very much in the industry. Like, so mm-hmm. people who are, That's true. who are very involved in the industry, who, um, you know, who seem to have known him. I've gotten like great emails from and very supportive emails. Um, but in terms of his team, like, I think that he's been, he's been so like they've kind of removed him from the brand in a lot of ways yeah. since th- this happened. So I don't know if, I don't know if Mario Batali per se has a team anymore. I don't know if he's read it. I would hope so. Oh yeah. But that would be, that would be interesting. I don't know either. I was thinking at the very least they could maybe change the recipe. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that would be great. You know? That would, I think, you know, I think taking a recipe that doesn't include, because it feels like he just shoehorned uh, a pizza dough recipe no, in there, it, and it's yeah. just this awful shortcut. But you demonstrated, and anyone in a, you know, normal publication, editorial department would take feedback and adjust the recipe if it doesn't work or something. Yeah, if it was get, you getting text a recipe, I right. think. You know, I have a friend who's a chef, and she works at uh, she works at a school that actually, you know, instructs people, and people come in, and they pay, and they, they'll do, like, an afternoon class where they learn to cook. And she tests recipes meticulously. Right. Well, um, you would and think. so it is surprising to, to make what clearly feels like an untested recipe. Yes, and I think it is important to point out that someone of Mario Batali's Holly's stature and reputation as this brilliant chef um, would put out something that clearly um, stinks, for lack of a better word. Well, that's kind of the, I mean, that's part of the luxury of, I think, being um, Mario Batali. Right, right. Like, so there's a pastryarchy there? (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think, I mean, I think there might be. I think there might be. I mean, yeah, he's famous. He probably didn't even look at the recipe so he doesn't need to I, and i i wonder how much i mean like when you start seeing these apologies emerge and mm-hmm. uh, you wonder how much of it i mean it's it's crafted by a pr team somewhere yes of course so but you know just how much of it how much of it has has even is at all their words mm-hmm. it's just like it's just frustrating because so many people are working so hard to and then you get some feedback that is negative about a res- recipe. Like if you wrote it on your blog and it didn't work and it was, people had a horrible experience at it, you know, you'd want to change it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's, it's almost like if people have a horrible experience, you want things to change. Yeah. And I feel like that's the heart of this movement. And <laughs> right. yet there are yep. people who are very resistant. So right. it's, it's, it seems like an obvious fix. And yet, and yet. Yeah. And we're not just talking about pizza dough cinnamon rolls anymore. It's not like, at it's all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Geraldine, uh, what else are you going to be writing on your blog? What can we look forward to? Or maybe um, books. Do you have another well, book so in the works? I'm, I'm traveling a lot less. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, so uh, my next, I'm, I'm supposed to be working on my next book. That's <laughs> awesome. Between the cinnamon rolls. Um, all of the attention it's gotten, getting hacked, and everything else. 
I have not been working on this book at all. Okay, um, yeah. But my next project uh, is supposed to be a, a look at the evolving role of marriage over the 20th century. Oh, wow. Um, and it's kind of, I, I look at it through the lens of uh, how to be a good wife advice books that were written from various decades across that century. That sounds and really interesting. It, I, I mean, I hope it will be. I hope it will be. That's exciting. So that's that's mm-hmm. the next project, but I have not cracked a lot of ground on it. I am, I think that everyone right now is writing about feminism and what's going on. I mm-hmm. think that is what's mm-hmm. on our minds. Um, and it's hard not to feel that on the blog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is a lot of what I'm I'm writing about right now. Um, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not what I've normally written about. Um, right. But I, yeah, yeah, I feel like it's true for it's everyone. Relevant. Everyone is, if, this is what's on all our minds. Mm-hmm. And if it's what's on your mind and, um, you know, we, I hope definitely to see more food <laughs> personally. But I, <laughs> yeah, I do too. I do too. What I really hope is to find a good cinnamon roll recipe. Mm, that would be the yeah. perfect finale. Yes. All right. We're definitely going to look out for that. And it looks like that's about all the time we have for today. But thank you so much, Geraldine, for joining us today. It's been really, really fun to talk to you. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. All right. And everyone, you can check out all over the place, Adventures in Travel, Petty Theft, um, and something else. <laughs> travel, <laughs> Wherever, love, but, and Petty Theft. Right. It's a mouthful of a title. All right. Well, thanks again, Geraldine, and thanks, everyone at Heritage. We'll see you next week on Eat Your Words. Oh, I like the way you do. Whoa. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening.